Golden Aquarians, Chapter 6, Part 1. Getting through Wednesday school was a nightmare. What with Greenie's face coming between Walt's eyes and his books. And after school, he and Slovik quarreled. It's all very well for you to say I should do something, he shouted, after she had goaded him for far too long. You don't have the colonel as a father. He glared at her, and she twitched her braid over her shoulder and chewed on the end of it, looking silently at Walt with her large hazel eyes. I'm sorry, she said at last. I guess I forgot. Not everybody's as lucky as me. Mum's such a terrific person. It's hard for me to believe anyone could be that different. You really can't talk to him at all? Not even sort of sneaking up on the subject? Walt shook his head. He felt small and stupid and helpless, and this made him mad at himself and his father, and even, as now, at Slovak. He kicked at the porch railing. I can tell you right off, he won't listen to me. And if he did, he'd probably kill me. She sighed. You're exaggerating again. Okay, okay. Suppose we get some more evidence. Would you talk to him about Greenie and what's going to happen to Aqua then? I don't know. Maybe. Yes, I guess so. He squirmed under her steady gaze, feeling like a wimp, and madder than ever at her for making him feel this way. She ignored his mood. So what we've got to do is get Greeny to tell us a lot more. Pin him down to details. It's all so vague right now. Pin him down? Walt had a sudden flash of the two of them in biology class, dissecting the small frog, pinning back its skin. He shuddered and swallowed. He really didn't want to meet Greeny again. He didn't want anything to do with any of it. Okay, Walt. We'd better get going before it gets dark. Slovak's chin stuck out and her face got that obstinate look that Walt was beginning to learn was no use arguing with. Because arguing wasn't going to change the way she thought. We'll grab a snack and I'll tell Mum that maybe we'll be a bit late so it won't matter if we miss supper. But what about homework and... Oh, Walt, don't be so feeble. I'll go by myself if you don't want to come. So of course he had to agree and soon they were paddling up the winding stream through the marsh to the place where they had last met Greeny. Walt dug his paddle down, turning it against the current so that the canoe stopped, and its prow edged into the tangle of moss that lined the stream. Can you tell it's the right place? Yes, Greeny's been here. Look, he pointed. Like a cobweb woven between the reeds was yet another twined pattern of fine grass cord. Intelligent life. Reading about alien beings was one thing. Meeting and communication with them was something else. Part of him was widely curious. Part of him just wished he were safely back home, canoeing on the comfortable familiarity of the Old Man River. I wish I knew what it meant, said Slovak, after they had waited for a while among the stillness of water and reeds. I mean, we're going to feel pretty dumb sitting here if it says, gone fishing, or come back next Tuesday. Stay, said a voice inside Walt's head. And at the same moment, Slovak said, Oh good, he's coming. Should we let him know where we are? He already knows, doesn't he? And he'll have heard the noise of our paddles in the canoe moving through the water. Remember how sounds travel in a swimming pool? She shook her head. You mean you don't even have swimming pools on Kawater? Goodness no, such luxury, replied Slovak. So where did you learn to swim? I can't swim. No one on Kawater does. Yet you come out in the canoe the other day without saying a word? Weren't you scared? If you must know, I was terrified. She blushed and laughed. So now you know my horrible secret. You sure fooled me, bossing me around like you owned the place. Sorry, guess that's just me. The more scared I am, the bossier I get. And you've certainly been bossy lately, Walt thought, with a kind of grudging ad admiration. But before he had time to put his thoughts into words, he was interrupted by a gargling sound. He looked over his shoulder and yelled, in surprise, because staring at them were a dozen pair of amber eyes, a dozen wide mouths identical, as if someone had hidden a triple mirror in among the reeds, a mirror that reflected Greenie's image over and over again. Oh, excuse me. 
they were facing a whole gang of alien frogs. Walt gulped and managed to suppress a second yell, wondering if Slovig had cried out too. It wouldn't be so bad if she had, if she had felt the shock of fear and revulsion that had swept over him. They were so large, so green, so slimy looking, and so many of them. To his horror, the one closest to Slovig held out a hand invitingly, and she unhesitatingly took it. Look, Walt, they want us to make a circle, to link together. She took Walt's hand in a firm, warm clasp, and he found his other taken by the frog creature closest to him. He drew back, but the fingers grasped his firmly, cool, damp, and almost boneless. He suppressed another shudder and told himself that it wasn't any worse than holding a frog or a toad. Then a voice began to speak briskly inside his head, and his fears were swept away. We are what you would call the Aquarians. You can understand better now, can't you? Yes, how? We realized that one of us communicating with you was not enough, that you needed a synergy, many of us working together before you could understand our message. The message is this. You must leave our planet. <laughs>